All right, well, uh, uh, thank you for coming in this afternoon. Um, if you're uh, here for the Brigade Deep Dive session, you're in the right place. If you're here because you thought there were free donuts, that was a lie. You shouldn't trust Twitter. I'm just kidding. Nobody said anything about free donuts. Um, uh, I'm Matt Butcher. Uh, I'm the uh, principal dev at what we call Deus Labs at Microsoft. We continue on the work that was done at Deus. Uh, Kent Rancourt is standing down here in the front. Uh, so I've been doing the work on Helm and on CNAB and on OM, OAM. Uh, but one of, the, one of the projects that I have been working on for a long time that is honestly one of my favorite projects that I've done during my career is Brigade. So I'm really excited to get to talk to you all about it today. Uh, I'm a big coffee snob, so pay no attention to that Starbucks cup. I was in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> and this is Kent. Uh, Hi, I'm Kent. Uh, I uh, work for Matt, actually. And uh, yeah, I work on the Brigade project as well as other random open source things uh, here and there, uh, really into CI, CD, and automation in general. Um, and you know, in my free time, I'm a, a dad and a martial arts instructor, a comic book nerd, love uh, bar trivia, and I think Starbucks is fine coffee, and <laughs> you can fight me if you want. Um, so yeah. Uh. Uh, it is, for the record, a pumpkin spice latte because they discontinued the holiday spice flat white. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, complaining on my behalf. So what we're going to talk about today is, uh, uh, well, first of all, I should ask, um, people in the room are, are relatively familiar with Brigade. Um, if, you are, if you are not at all familiar with it, we did a session yesterday uh, covering sort of an introduction. I'll gloss some of that material during my part of the presentation today, uh, but you, you know the, the other video and the slides were posted online, so you can uh, you can go watch that if you want to get a kind of like architectural overview and see some great you know first demonstrations of what you, what you can do with it. But we're going to talk about two specific things in here today. Uh, I'm going to talk about building custom gateways for Brigade. So this is the way to trigger Brigade events. And then Kent is going to talk about building a custom worker, uh, basically replacing the JavaScript worker that comes built into Brigade. So we're really excited about this. This is actually the first time we've ever spoken publicly about uh, doing an alternative uh, worker. So this is going to be a fun one for me, uh, more fun for Kent. So a uh, high-level architectural overview of Brigade. So the idea with Brigade was that we wanted to build something that essentially uh, worked like a the, the analogy we like to use is uh, if Kubernetes is an operating system that is responsible for managing uh, pods running on a cluster or containers running on a cluster, if Kubernetes is an operating system, uh, one of the interesting things that we have in our existing operating systems is shell scripting. And a shell script uh, is, is essentially a way for us to take the commands that we have in our uh, operating system and chain them together, wrap control structures around them, manage the control, the flow of control, manage errors, be able to respond to events like that. We wanted to build something for Kubernetes that felt approximately like a shell scripting language. So, uh, and again, if you want the details on this, go ahead and watch that video from yesterday, but the short version of it is, we, did, we attempted to write something like that using JavaScript as the shell script language and using this, this sort of event metaphor, uh, like AppleScript, if you've ever used AppleScript on a, on a Mac device, right? Where uh, we can declare some events. So in AppleScript, it's like window gets maximized, window gets moved. For us, it's like uh, something happens on the cluster. And that triggers the script, and the script can run in response to it. And what the script can do is just like in an operating system, you fire off commands in the cluster, you spin up pods. And you execute some stuff on a pod, you pipe that data out to another pod, you, you, you know, fan out, fan in, do whatever fancy kinds of flow control you can do. And that's the way that Brigade essentially works. So here's the architectural diagram for what the system actually looks like under the hood. So the green box in the middle is sort of the important one. And this is the controller for Brigade. The controller's job is to listen for events and spawn workers to run the scripts. So a worker is going to execute the script for you. The worker's job is run the JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript says start a new job, pass it this information, and it's going to execute that whole script's workflow. 
So it might be responsible for setting up and tearing down one container or 100 containers or 1,000 containers and then managing their life cycle and collecting the information and controlling the flow. So we'll look at a bunch of uh, scripts later on. Uh, but the, the, then there's this part way over on the right side here, which is the gateways. And uh, that would be the left side. <laughs> uh, stage right. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the, the gateways are the part that basically translates some kind of happening into an, an event that Brigade understands. So you could think of some very trivial ones, like the one we'll see a little bit later, that just every five minutes triggers an event. And that event gets fired off, and the controller sees it and starts up a script to handle that event. But you can do more, uh, more advanced ones, like uh, listening on uh, webhooks, like a GitHub action, or a, a Trello board's webhook when you drag an event from one place to another. And you can use things like that and trigger off events. Or you can listen on the Kubernetes API and trigger off events. Uh, earlier this week, we published a, a quick blog post on the open source Microsoft blog. Uh, where we where we uh, have a we released a controller this week called Buck, the Brigade Universal Controller for Kubernetes. Got to make sure I spell that right. Uh, and basically, it was a Brigade controller that listened for CRD events and responded to them by spinning up scripts. So you could basically, in minutes, prototype a CRD controller uh, just by writing a little bit of JavaScript. So there, the the, the the controller or the uh, gateway system is designed to be fairly flexible to allow you to pick kind of whether you want an event queue or whether you want to fire off cron jobs and be able to trigger those kinds of things in gateways. Now, one of our design goals in Brigade was to try and make as much of it pluggable and configurable as possible. Now, of course, the scripting language itself, we got to make that as, as flexible as you can as you can use it, right? It should be a full-fledged scripting language. You should be able to pull in dependencies from a package manager, things like that. So that's sort of a foregone conclusion. But we also wanted to make sure that things like gateways were easy to build, that things like the worker were uh, at least swappable, where you could take one out and put in an alternate implementation. So, uh, so basically, everything in the, in the bluish-gray boxes there are things, parts of Brigade that you could uh, create your own, customize them, swap things in and out. And really, at the end of the day, the controller is the only thing that's an absolute must-have for Brigade to be able to work. So today, I'm going to talk about the gateways. And then in a few moments, um, uh, Kent is going to come up here and talk about creating custom workers. So here's a kind of quick screenshot of a brigade.js file. So uh, it, it should read basically like your, your traditional JavaScript, right? Uh, I can require in other modules. That Brigadier module is sort of like the base level module that gives you the base level functionality. But you can also uh, declare some other dependencies and pull stuff off of NPM or whatever. Uh, then we're, then we're going to add an event handler function, aptly named handle, and we're going to tie that, we're going to bind that to several different events. So this is the one from the Brigade Universal Controller for Buck. This is the one for Buck. Uh, basically, when a CRD comes in, you have three possible states for a CRD and then our error state, right? Uh, a CRD can be, a, a, a CR instance can be created, it can be modified, or it can be deleted. So this is a very basic piece of JavaScript that when the gateway notifies it, hey, something was added, it fires off this handle function. And the handle logs something, parses out some JSON stuff, loops through some things. But this is basically what a brigade.js file looks like. Nothing particularly weird or special about it. It's just a JavaScript file that uses event handlers. So we want to build a gateway. And we want a gateway that's going to take some happenstance out there and convert it to one of those events. Now, again, I'm going to go back here. The events, right? We've got events.on. So we've got four there. Let's create a new one. That's basically what we want to do. So the process of building a gateway goes like this. Uh, we need to figure out what we want to trigger it. Uh, then for its output, we want it to create a secret inside of Kubernetes. Because in the current version of Brigade, the way it communicates to the controller is by generating a secret with all the data in it about the event it received. And the controller watches for secrets of the particular type on them. And then we want to be able to run this typically inside of the cluster. Technically, you can watch the Kubernetes event stream from outside. But typically, we want to run it inside of the cluster. So a custom gateway 
is the piece that's going to make it possible for you to trigger your own brigade events based on really whatever condition you want. So if you take a look in the brigade, uh, brigade core repository, github.com slash brigade core, you'll see things like a Trello gateway. Uh, you'll see a Bitbucket gateway, uh, and I, written by the person sitting in the front row. You'll see a cron job gateway that you can give it a particular timestamp and it'll execute the, an event every time that happens. You'll see cloud events, um, uh, v 2 or something like that gateway that'll listen on cloud events uh, emitters and handle them. Uh, but all of them really just follow that same pattern. You create a secret and you inject that secret into Kubernetes and you let the controller pick it up. So I'm gonna walk through a little bit of code here on a couple slides to show you how quickly you can create one of these. Uh, I believe it's exactly 61 lines of code, but I'm gonna clip off the import statements at the top. Uh, and this is gonna be in Rust. How many people are vaguely familiar with Rust? How many people are vaguely familiar with at least one programming language? Okay, so this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be a problem. I'm not doing anything terribly fancy. Um, and this is using the kube library that is also written by someone else who is in this room. This is super exciting today. Um, so here's basically what we're gonna do. We are de gonna declare two functions, a main function, and then a handler, uh, a, a, a generator function that's gonna generate our secret for us. And that's really all there's gonna be to this controller. So this main function here is going to load our kube config because we're injecting secrets into Kubernetes. Uh, it's gonna create a new Kubernetes client, gonna make sure it's got access to a namespace and knows which namespace. Uh, and then it's gonna use a project. In Brigade, projects are where you store like work group specific configuration. So team A has a project, team B has a project. They can keep their credentials and things like that separate. That gets loaded at startup time. And then we're gonna say this gateway is going to run every five minutes. So we're gonna declare our little sleep time interval there and we're gonna run this gateway every five minutes and it's gonna trigger an event. Then we go into the aptly named loop block, which is gonna sit there, stall for five minutes, fire off an event. Sit there, stall for five minutes, fire off another event. Uh, and all we're gonna do there is create that secret. So if you look down at that line that says match API colon colon V1 secret, all we're doing right in there is saying, hey, I wanna create a new secret. Here's the body of that secret. And, uh, and that's, all, that's literally all this gateway does. Waits five minutes, creates a secret. Waits five minutes, creates a secret until you terminate it. And here's that generate secret function. Uh, this is one of the things I absolutely love about working in Rust is that uh, strongly typed language and yet we can just declare our data structure just like this. So I inline the secret. Uh, and, and can base64 encode everything, which is necessary for the Kubernetes API. And that's all there is to this function. So there we go, about uh, 61 lines of code. We just loop through and we create a secret like this. And now all we're gonna do is create a, a small piece of JavaScript that's gonna run. And actually, the demo I'm gonna show you does not execute this exact JavaScript. The message is gonna say, hello world, and it's gonna fire off in an Alpine pod instead of just logging to the console. But we've got this tiny little snippet of JavaScript that's gonna execute every interval. So here's how it goes. I install and run my gateway. So it's out there running in my cluster. And then I install my project and my brigade.js file, upload those into the cluster. And then the, the gateway is just gonna sit there. And every five minutes, it's gonna fire off an event name interval. Brigade's controller is gonna see that and it's gonna say, all right, I'm gonna fire up the handler for this project and, and execute the, the interval event on that. And as you can see here, the interval event is basically just gonna log something to the output. So of course, the JavaScript part, we can swap in and out with any JavaScript we want, right? This is just the demo piece. But the important thing here is that we basically created that gateway that can trigger this kind of thing uh, however we want. So I'm gonna uh, show you the output of this because I've been, ha I've been uh, cluttering up Kent's cluster for a little while now. And uh, so this is brig term. The brig, uh, brig is the brigade command line and it comes with a little terminal thing that uh, will basically update in real time. Uh, looks like we've got one interval event in there. Oh, we've got several interval events in there because they've been firing since I've been talking. Uh, and we can go in here and take a look at the logs and we'll see it ran that hello world pod and it printed out hello world. Uh, wow, I know, right? Uh, but as we can see, it, every time that, we, that this interval event ticks, we get another one of these created. So that's actually all there really is uh, to creating a new gateway in Brigade. 
So you can imagine that, uh, that you know, we can take this same basic pattern and you can write something that will handle webhooks from whatever platform you want, or we'll read off of a Kafka queue and wait for events and then trigger some kind of script. That's basically the kind of thing that we're after when we write new brigade gateways. So I'm gonna hand it over to Kent now and uh, he's gonna move it on and talk about workers. Okay, thanks. So uh, Matt did a, a pretty good job of explaining the role of a worker in all of this. He had those slides with the architecture at the beginning. So that actually saves me a little bit of trouble in terms of explaining the, the role of the worker. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move right on to talking about how you can um, customize that worker. Um, and we're going to take three different approaches to doing that. And we're going to cover each one very quickly. So I apologize. This is going to be like a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, but, uh, you know, the first approach that we're going to use is we're going to use a little bit of configuration to add additional NPM packages to the default worker image, um, packages that aren't ordinarily there. Um, and then the second approach is going to be, you know, not entirely dissimilar from that, but we're going to use a, a Docker file to construct um, a custom worker image that extends the, the default worker. And then the third one is going to be a little bit more interesting and in-depth because we're going to create a, uh, a custom worker completely from scratch. Okay, so just to kind of uh, level set, we're going to be using this very simple hello world um, brigade.js script. Um, it responds to an exec event, which is the event that the brig run command typically um, generates. So we're not doing anything fancy here. Everything's going to be done off of the command line. Um, there's going to be no um, uh, source control involved. There's no GitHub involved in this. There's no UI. There's none of that. We're trying to keep things very, very simple. Um, so this is an event that I can generate from the command line. And you, know, you can see that all it's going to do is fire up a new job based on an Alpine container. Um, and it's going to echo the words, hello world. So really, um, no big deal. Um, I'm a big fan of what I call the Julia Child approach, um, you know, taking the finished turkey out of the oven um, instead of, you know, I don't want to fumble around in front of you with this brig project create command, which is um, an interactive, like, interview kind of process. Do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want to do that? Um, so rather than do that, I've pre-created um, a project called Hello World, um, and the, the bullet points uh, underneath here just kind of uh, enumerate um, some of the fields that I filled in as I went through that process. So if you wanted to duplicate you know, these experiments yourself later on, this would be um, how you would do it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to say brig run hello world. And very unsurprisingly, um, this is going to run something and we can look at the job and we can see that, that it actually echoed hello world. So um, no big deal there. But what we're going to do as we um, move on, whoops, uh, we're going to start adding some embellishments to this. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, now I don't know why you would do this in real life, but for the purposes of demonstration, we want to um, assign random names to the jobs. Um, so I'm going to use uh, an NPM package called Unique Names Generator. Now this NPM package doesn't exist on um, the default brigade worker image. So we've got to get that on there somehow. Um, so that my script can take advantage of it. And the approach that we're going to use um, this time around um, is uh, we supply a brigade.json file. And this is a little bit of configuration that we can pass in. Um, and one of the things that you can do is you can enumerate dependencies that you want to be installed into the container um, by a pre-start hook before your brigade.js executes. Um, so right here, um, we've said that we want the unique names generator NPM package um, installed at version 4.0.0. And I've, uh, once again, you know, using the Julia Child approach, I created a project called Hello Random. Um, and you can see here that we have to pass it this little extra bit of configuration this time. And we'll go ahead and run that. And it's brig 
run. I can't type today. Hello, random. And I forgot to pass it that extra configuration. That would have helped. And you can see right now it says pre-start and it says installing unique names generator 400. That was the NPM package we said we wanted. Um, it's installing it right now and I'm completely at the mercy of the network. And hopefully this does not take forever. Okay, it finished installing it, and it says, if you look carefully in the output there, it says, using job name wrong sloth. So we successfully generated a, a, a random job name, and if we actually looked in here um, in term at our hello random, we see uh, a job in there called wrong sloth. Um, so. All right, so um, the next embellishment that we're going to add to this, we're going to add some colored output um, to our brigade.js. Um, we're going to do that using an NPM package called colors. Now, once again, this is an NPM package that doesn't exist on the default worker, but this time we're going to take a different approach to getting it there. Um, maybe you don't want to go through what we just went through where you have to um, pull NPM packages down every single time a, a build runs. Um, so maybe you want to pre-bake that stuff into a, a custom image, and that's what I've done here. Um, so you see a little Docker file over here, um, and up at the top you see that we're basically extending an existing image. Now, ordinarily, you would extend the latest release of the Brigade Worker, which I think is 1.2.1. Um, the, the thing in my from directive there is an image that, um, that uh, is built from the, the head of the master branch of Brigade, just because I wanted to be you know, living on the edge um, when I gave the presentation, as one does, right? Um, but uh, the rest of it is pretty simple, um, and you see that what I'm doing is I'm using the run directive um, to yarn add some additional um, packages, uh, NPM packages, that is. And, and the interesting thing is that you could really do anything you wanted here. You could add system level packages if you wanted. I actually played around for a little while with trying to um, get image magic to work in my demo, but then I was like, why would you ever do this? And so, like, so, um, but you could do it. So um, once again, I've pre-created a project. This time I called it Hello Colors. Um, and I did something a little bit different this time around. Um, during the interview process, it asked me if I wanted to um, configure some advanced options, and I said yes, and I pointed it in the direction of the, the custom worker image that I created. So that Docker file we were just looking at, I already, you know, Julia Child approach again, I already built it and pushed it somewhere, and so we're referencing that um, right here, and we can go ahead and run that. And this time we don't even really need to poke around in the terminal. It's very obvious right here that we got some green text this time around. It says using job organic possum. Okay, so. So for our third and final approach, we're going to try something completely different. Um, really, the sky's the limit in terms of what you could do with a custom worker as long as you kind of play by the same rules that the default worker plays by. So if you consume um, your configuration from the same sources, which happens to be environment variables and Kubernetes secrets, um, and as long as you label any pods that you create the same way that the default worker would have, you can fool the rest of Brigade, the controller, the dashboard, everything. You can fool all of it into thinking that those jobs were created by the normal brigade worker. Um, so uh, I don't want to get down into the nitty gritty of all of this because um, it's really dry and it's really boring, but it's all documented. So I'll refer you to the documentation if you want to figure out, you know, what are the environment variables that I should look like? What are they named? What do they mean? Um, what are the labels that I have to put on the pods? Um, but using this approach, um, I tackled a, a problem that keeps coming up 
over, over and over again. Um, so, you know, I mentioned earlier in the, in the introduction that I'm kind of a CI CD nerd. Um, Brigade is by no means just for CI CD, um, but that's something that a lot of people are doing with it, um, and, and myself included. And uh, a lot of people ha have asked over the last couple of years, you know, what about some kind of support for um, declarative pipelines? I just, you know, I like the way that Circle or Travis or something like that works, and I want the same kind of experience on top of Brigade. You know, maybe I don't like to write JavaScript, just let me write some YAML. I know there's YAML haters too, but um, we, all, we all have our preferences, right? Um, so, so this is an issue that my friend and coworker, Carolyn, opened asking for declarative support. Um, and uh, I think maybe about a half dozen people asked me about it yesterday after uh, Matt and Radu's talk. Um, so this is something that people have been asking for. Um, and as it happens, I've been working on it on the side. Um, and I've created uh, an open specification. It's really only a draft at the moment, but it's uh, an open specification for what declarative pipelines based on um, containers might look like. Um, so, you know, you can see where that kind of fits in with what Brigade does. Um, so I went ahead and created a, a reference implementation of that specification. So it's a Drake spec compliant pipeline executor that also happens to be a Brigade compatible worker. So in my very last example here, um, I've created a project called Hello Drake. And um, you, know, you can see the options here that I went through. And much as before, um, I pointed the project configuration at a custom image. Um, this time, the image is Love the Drake Brigade Worker version 0210. Um, I also had to pass it a custom command. I don't want to get into why I did that. But suffice it to say that if you're not extending the default worker and you're doing something completely different, you have to tell it what command to use. Um, we'll fix that in Brigade 2.0, but we can't fix it now because it would be a breaking change. Um, so, uh, but the really, really cool thing on this slide, for me at least because I don't like JavaScript, um, is that when it asked me for a Brigade.js script, the thing that I gave it wasn't even JavaScript, it was YAML. And when this, fire work, uh, when this worker fires up, it's going to look for, quote, brigade.js. And what it's going to find is actually YAML that it's going to parse, and, and it's going to drive um, the, the execution of a pipeline, which is just a series of jobs. Um, it's going to drive all of that based off what it finds in that YAML configuration file. And we're actually not going to look at that YAML right now, because I, I don't want to bury the lead here. I'm not trying to hijack the session and turn this into something that's about declarative pipelines. I'm using declarative pipeline support as an example of what you could do with um, a custom worker. So without further ado, we're going to say brig run hello Drake. And I'm going to pass it an event called foobar because that happens to be the trigger for the particular pipeline that I'm trying to execute. And we see that's running right now. And it has run two different jobs called foo and bar. It ran them in sequence. So there is some declarative pipeline support there. Um, again, I don't want to bury the lead here because that's not what this um, you know, talk is about. But don't be surprised if support for this makes it into Brigade itself sometime in the relatively near future, because um, it's something that people have asked for. Um, and uh, you know, again, to really just bring the focus back to the customization of workers, um, somebody asked me yesterday, um, you know, what about uh, Brigade supporting um, BPCL? And do I have those letters right? B, is it BP? I, it's a business process language. I don't know much about it, but I said, you know what? The, the way to approach that would be you know, by creating a custom worker. So come to, come to this talk and find out more about that. So really, the sky's the limit in terms of what you could um, accomplish with this. So um, that's really all I've got. So I'll, I'll have Matt come back up in case anybody has questions for, for either of us. But thank you. Anybody have any questions? 
Yep. When would I use a customize the worker versus putting the logic in a custom job like a custom doctor? Uh, one more time on that. <laughs> Well the, well, the worker is, I mean, that, that's basically what it is. The, the uh, uh, question is, uh, when would you decide between extending the, the Docker image or creating a custom worker? Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, when you extend the, the default image, you really are creating a custom worker. So I, I don't know that I'm clear well, on the difference case, between. I suppose in your case, your worker's written in Go, right? Yeah, but that but that that's you so know if implementation. You were in in your earlier example, you were just layering additional JavaScript libraries on top of the Node.js thing. If you want to do something slightly more advanced, that's probably when you would replace the right. whole worker, yeah. right? I guess like I had a job that generated random animal names versus having a worker generate random names. Oh, oh, I see, oh, 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 I see yeah, what, yeah, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. The the so so the design of Brigade is really that you're supposed to offload most of the heavy lifting to jobs. Um, you're, you're really not, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think you're really not supposed to do a whole lot of complicated stuff um, inside the worker itself under, under yeah. normal circumstances, yeah. um, which is why I actually tried, you know, with the little embellishments that I put on my uh, Hello World JS, um, that's why I tried to do, you know, very simple things that seemed like things you might practically do inside the worker, like like um, a, a library to help me concoct names for the jobs because you're not gonna have a job create the name for itself. There's kind of a chicken and egg problem there, right? So, yeah, try catch and retry logic. Yeah, so worker, I, I think you would in general refrain from creating a worker until you had a reason you needed to replace something about the way the worker, so if you really, really wanted a Python-based one instead of a JavaScript one, yes. Or if, in this case, uh, you, you want a completely declarative language and don't want to even allow your users to script, then you know, replacing the worker is really the only way to do it. But you're right. Really, the, the intention is that most of the heavy work is always uh, sent off to a job, and the job should do that work and return it back to the, to the worker itself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I misunderstood that at first, though. It was a good question. Yeah, it was a great question. It's like you know this system through and through. <laughs> and there are, I mean, there's, so there'd be some really interesting things you could do with custom workers uh, to, to build up something that could process in, in different kinds of ways, right? If you, uh, if you really wanted to support some kind of other language, you should be able to write that, but again, that would be, that's when you really don't want it to, don't want the pipeline processing to work the same way. Like, like I know one example is, you know, in the very early days of Brigade, like long before I was involved in it, like you had contemplated using Lua yeah. as the scripting language yeah. instead of JavaScript. So let's say that, you know, you, want, you wanted your users to, to be scripting their, their pipelines in Lua instead of JavaScript, like you could make that happen. Uh, you, I, I think you should pull up the, the YAML file and just kind of give a quick high-level view of it so people have a visualization of how that looks compared to the JavaScript. Uh, sure. But one, one caveat is that uh, workers are slightly more intense because you do have to write the glue code that says, uh, okay, this, when I interpret this YAML file, I'm spinning up a new Kubernetes job, right? So you will need to import Kubernetes libraries and do stuff like that. They're not quite as trivially easy to use as... Uh, as say just writing a brigade.js file, which should be you know a half a dozen lines or so. Yeah. So so if you're somebody like me who doesn't enjoy JavaScript, um, you might and and if you've worked with things like Travis or Circle in the past, you might find something like this um, more palatable. Um, it's it's a bit of YAML based on as I said an open specification um, version zero four zero of of that draft, um, and it's it's really just basically. Um, broken down into two sections. You have jobs and you have um, pipelines. Um, and uh, both jobs and pipelines, they're, they're maps of uh, job names to um, descriptions of the jobs. And um, you know, similarly, maps of pipeline names to descriptions of the, the pipelines. So um, you know, this looks pretty unremarkable. 
Um, you know, it's, it's, you, you give the container a name, you tell it what image it's based on, what command to execute, any arguments you want to pass to the command. Um, and, the, and the pipelines are really just um, references to the jobs. So this, this here literally says um, execute foo and execute bar, and executing bar is dependent on successful execution of foo. Obviously, you can do much more complex things than, than that, but this is, this is kind of like the hello world. Yeah. Yep. All right, I think we, uh, go ahead. If you are executing it from Brig, you do. How, yeah. how would that work in a, in a real Yes. So um, for, the, for the purposes of simplicity, we didn't involve any um, source control system in these examples. So everything was driven completely off of the, the command line. But in a real-life scenario where um, the events that are triggering a build might have been something like a push to, to GitHub or a, um, a pull request or something like that, um, both your brigade.js script and the brigade.json configuration um, can just be pulled right from your, your source code repository. Um, so because we omitted all of that for the sake of simplicity, I had to pass that flag. Um, but ordinarily, that's not something that, that you would have to do. So literally, you give it the GitHub URL and it pulls that data to your GitHub repository and loads the brigade.json and the brigade.js file straight out of your GitHub. Or store yeah, yeah, or storing it in a container. Yeah, there, there's, so there's, there's, some op there's options here. Micron that fires one, yeah? No, no. So the gateway itself is, can be completely ignorant of where any of that data is coming because it's the controller that'll load the project. The project file will say, oh, and before you start up, pull this GitHub repository or uh, grab that data out of this config map that's already stored in my cluster or here's a you know, base64 encoded blob, uh, dump this somewhere on the file system first. All right, I think we're slightly over time, but thank you all very much for coming. Uh, again, if, if uh, you want to get your feet wet on the very beginnings of this, the recording from yesterday covers a lot of the basics, and Radu, who did that one, uh, goes through like seven or eight different quick brigade.js examples to show cool things that you can do with it. Thank you very much. Enjoy your afternoon.